Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we're going to talk, uh, proceed with our next discussion. Yeah. Uh, last week we were discussing about uh, uh, key concepts in social linguistics. Apa saja key concepts, concepts, concept, uh, concept. concept di social linguistics. Nah, sekarang today we are going to be talking about the unit of analysis. Salah satu uh, uh, more specific uh, analysis uh, unit of analysis in social linguistics. Gitu ya, apa yang kita analisa di social linguistics? Uh, in social linguistics, of course, we analyze language, but um, it is not just language per se, but it is more about varieties in a language yeah i'm going to be talking in detail but first i'm going to show you uh, the powerpoint that i'm gonna be using uh, as my material of presentation today so let me share a screen with you my material Okay, right. So we're going to be talking about varieties, language varieties. Yeah. So in social linguistics, in social linguistics study, we are interested to find out or to, we seek for the explanation why people speak a certain language in different ways. Jadi kita itu di social linguistics itu kita ingin mencari penjelasan mengapa orang menggunakan uh, variasi-variasi yang berbeda uh, ketika uh, menggunakan bahasa dan menggunakan variasi-variasi yang berbeda. Uh, we try to explain the different variations. Kita mencoba untuk menjelaskan uh, apa variasi yang muncul, and we also uh, try to seek for explanation. Kita mencoba mencari penjelasan why people use it differently. Mengapa orang menggunakannya dengan cara yang berbeda, terutama ketika you uh, work with variational. Social linguistics atau uh, social linguistics yang memang uh, meneliti tentang varia ver varieties, gitu ya. Karena uh, seperti kita bicarakan in the previous uh, in the previous uh, discussion that in social linguistics study we also we do not just cover uh, variational social linguistics, but also interactional social linguistics, gitu ya. Nah, yang ini adalah uh, unit dasar yang harus kita ketahui when we dive into uh, variational social linguistics. Okay, all right. Nah. Okay, so all languages, All languages exhibit internal variations. It exists in a number of varieties. Okay, jadi jenis um, semua bahasa itu dalam semua bahasa itu ada variasi. Orang menggunakannya secara berbeda-beda. Uh, dan variasinya itu uh, ada beberapa. There are some. Uh, there are some levels of variations. Starting from the micro, starting from the smallest, that is phonology, uh, mulai dari uh, sound, uh, to the morphology, and, and then to the sentences, and uh, also on the styles later. Yeah. One example is that uh, Javanese as a, as a language, Javanese as a language shows a lot of internal variations which are found in different places. For example, in, in, uh, if you speak Javanese in the eastern part of Java and the western part of Java, you will see some internal variations, right? When you saw uh, the suffix that you, you see here, yeah? 
Uh, the suffix uh, in bahasa in bahasa the suffix kan uh, in uh, in the western part of uh, western part of Java. Then when you say tanya kan, we'll be using the suffix no, takok no, or in the eastern part of Java. Then in Solo, for example, you say takok ni or takok ke. Okay, so there is a Japanese exhibit different variations uh, in the language. Okay, so this is to explain what is actually varieties. So a, a variety referred to different ways or variation of ways a language is spoken. Yeah, and also written. Okay, nah. So to put a simple definition, remember a simple definition, then uh, we have language and we have dialects. Often we see dialects as varieties of langu a language, right? Jadi uh, karena ada definisi sederhana ini, kita menganggap bahwa yang namanya dialek itu adalah variasi dari sebuah bahasa. Oke, okay, jadi sebuah bahasa itu terdiri dari beberapa dialek, terdiri dari beberapa variasi. This is actually a very simple definition. Uh, this is a definition that is offered by its linguistic feature. Ini adalah penjelasan yang sangat sederhana. Dan uh, pada kenyataannya, ternyata uh, when we try to see varieties, especially the relationship between language versus dialect, it is not that simple. This is not always the case. So, tidak selalu seperti itu. Tuh ya. Jadi, banyak, uh, there are other factors that should help us to determine whether a code, apakah sebuah kode itu, okay, sebuah variasi itu adalah bahasa, Ataukah dialek? Oke, okay. jadi kalau kita, oke, okay. kalau kita uh, melihat dari definisi yang tadi bahwa dialek itu adalah variasi dari sebuah bahasa, seperti itu tadi ya. However, this is really not a case. In social linguistics, we have to be careful to define what is language and what is dialect. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go first with how do we define uh, language uh, using the linguistic criterion. Using the linguistic criteria. Menggunakan kriteria linguistics. Okay. Jadi, one criterion commonly used to differentiate between language and dialect is mutual intelligibility. Yeah. You know what is mutual intelligibility, right? Apa itu mutual intelligibility? Kalau kalian mutual intelligible itu artinya apa? Sama-sama dapat dimengerti. Sama-sama dapat dimengerti, correct. Okay, so uh, what uh, mutual intelligibility means that we share the same understanding over a message. Tuh ya? Tuh. Jadi uh, secara linguistik, bagaimana secara ilmu linguistik feature ya, bagaimana kita bisa membedakan bahasa dan dialek adalah menggunakan uh, uh, the estimate of mutual intelligibility, whether the linguistic feature is similar or different. Jadi menggunakan ukuran linguistic feature. Apakah uh, kode itu, code itu bisa berbeda ataukah sama? If you speak a code with someone else and then both of you can understand each other, that is uh, then uh, defined as speaking uh, different dialects. However, when you speak uh, a code and then with another person and this other uh, the, between you and your partner do not share the same understanding atau do not understand each other, it means that you speak different language. 
itu adalah definisi yang ditawarkan uh, kalau kita membedakan uh, language and accent menggunakan linguistic feature. Nah, ka, jadi kalau seperti itu uh, mudah kan ya? Saya rasa in everyday practice, in everyday practice we can definitely tell what languages we speak in. We speak Right, you speak Bahasa Indonesia. Bahasa Indonesia is a language. Korean is a language. Spanish is a language. German, uh, uh, Spanish is a language, and then French is a language, because we call that language. We think we speak different languages because we do not understand. Uh, we do not have our. We do not share mutual intelligibility. Nah. Uh, Implikasi dari uh, ini itu apa? Itu ya. Implikasinya adalah karena bahasa itu karena cara kita mendefinisi, mendefinisikan bahasa itu seperti itu, kita mendapat interpretasi bahwa oh, language is something is a code that is spoken by wider or bigger number of people. Meanwhile, dialect is spoken, uh, dialect is something inside it or under a language which is spoken regionally, gitu ya, with fewer number of speaker. In social linguistics, though, we question this way of defining uh, language and dialects. Di social linguistics, uh, kita mempertanyakan cara mendefinisikan yang seperti ini. Karena uh, we in, uh, in social linguistic point of view, this is uh, this kind of definition and criterion is not that accurate, tidak akurat, ya. Yeah. Okay. So how do social linguists uh, how do social linguists then distinguish language and dialect? Nah, saya akan uh, membicarakan dulu. First, I would like to describe or explain why the previous definition uh, is problematic in social linguistic point of view. Tuh ya. Jadi, kenapa uh, kenapa definisi yang tadi itu problematic in the eye of social linguistics? Satu, uh, kalau memang ukuran uh, ukuran apa mana yang language mana yang dialect itu adalah mutual intelligibility, kalau bisa dimengerti bersama itu dialek. Jadi mas, misalnya kalau anda uh, 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 bahasa Jawa gitu ya, kita punya uh, Jawa Solo, kita punya Jawa Jawa Timuran, uh, kita melihatnya itu sebagai dialek dialek Jawa Timur, dialek Solo misalnya. Ya, nah kalau misalnya uh, ukuran dari definisi uh, uh, language and dialect is actually mutual intelligibility, there are a lot of languages in the world which are actually mutually intelligible. Intelligible, banyak bahasa bahasa di dunia ini yang sebenarnya mutual intel, uh, mutually intelligible, bisa dipahami oleh speakers of those different languages, oleh pembicara dari uh, bahasa yang berbeda tersebut. Oke, okay? contohnya adalah bahasa Indonesia dengan bahasa Melayu Malaysia. Ketika kita uh, menonton misalnya uh, in YouTube channel where you, uh, when you for example subscribe to Malaysian YouTube channel and you listen to uh, the Malaysian speakers speak the language, we do not need subtitles. Kita tidak perlu subtitle untuk mengerti apa yang dikatakan. Okay, the same thing happened to Spanish and Portuguese. They are two different languages. But the Spanish people who speak Spanish or the people who speak uh, uh, Portuguese can understand 95% of Spanish or Portuguese. Same thing that happened to the language of Urdu and Hindi in India. The speaker of Urdu and the speaker of Hindi, though they are claimed, walaupun mereka diklaim sebagai bahasa yang berbeda, they are actually... Uh, they are actually mutually intelligible. 
Oke, okay. jadi kalau begitu, kalau misalnya kita memakai definis, menilai definisi yang tadi, uh, Uh, then this definition cannot apply to a lot of languages in the world. Gitu. Jadi, what is actually, uh, how do then, um, how do then social linguistics see uh, language and dialect? Yeah. So, how do social linguists distinguish language and dialect? So social linguists claim that to identify language and dialect, it is more of sociopolitical identity or social sociopolitical interest, often national identity rather than linguistic facts which determine the two. Oke, okay. jadi uh, contohnya seperti bahasa uh, Melayu Malaysia dan bahasa Indonesia, walaupun kita sama-sama paham, tapi mereka pasti akan marah ketika kita mengatakan bahasa Melayu adalah bahasa bahasa Indonesia atau bahasa Indonesia adalah bahasa Melayu. Itu ya, uh, mereka mengklaim bahwa uh, bukan uh, uh, bahasa Indonesia dan bahasa uh, Malaysia Melayu, Melayu Malaysia ditetapkan sebagai dua bahasa yang berbeda for the national identity untuk identitas negara so it's a political it's a political interest it's a political motivation that is driving it the same thing with Spanish and Portuguese in Urdu and in the case of Urdu and Hindi it, it is a case of religion uh, motivation Gitu ya. Jadi bagaimana sebenarnya kita membedakan itu, uh, membedakan ling- uh, dialects and language in social linguistics? It is actually driven by sociopolitical identity. Ya. Yeah. Uh, lalu uh, kalau begitu uh, language, kalau social linguistics, especially a variety uh, vari- uh, Uh, variation, variational social linguistics. Lalu apa itu yang dinamakan bahasa, gitu ya? So a language is actually a dialect with army and navy. It is an analogy that is offered by Max Weinrich. Jadi Max Weinrich itu meng, uh, membuat sebuah analogi yang namanya bahasa itu apa sih? Yang nama, bah, uh, namanya bahasa itu adalah variasi dialek yang punya kekuatan sosial dan politik. Jadi yang namanya bahasa, ya, uh, one example is English. Okay, English uh, has a lot of dialects, gitu ya. Tetapi the so-called English, the so-called English yang ada di dalam pikiran kita, terutama standard English itu adalah uh, dialek atau uh, variasi yang paling punya Uh, sociopolitical uh, value yang lebih tinggi atau dianggap lebih tinggi ya yeah. so a language is dialect with army and navy jadi dialek yang paling dianggap punya social and political value yang lebih tinggi itulah yang kemudian dipromosikan untuk menjadi language oke okay. Now, so yeah. Nah, karena uh, adanya banyak misconceptions ya, yeah. we have a lot of misconceptions about uh, notion of language and dialect. Uh, there are a lot of negative attributions that are given to dialect. Karena adanya konsepsi uh, yang salah tentang bahasa dan dialek seperti misalnya dialek itu adalah di bawahnya bahasa dialek itu di uh, di dialek itu adalah variasi yang uh, di, uh, digunakan oleh orang yang lebih sedikit tapi kemudian bahasa di uh, digunakan oleh negara misalnya nah karena miskonsepsi miskonsepsi itulah Uh, maka muncul some negative uh, attributions atau negative meaning atau uh, pejorative meaning on dialects. Jadi pe- tahu arti pejorative ya? What is pejorative? Apa 
Why to pejorative? Let me. Wait. Let me ask. Uh, let me put it in. Tahu apa itu pejorative? My computer doesn't work as fast. I thought I already clicked chat. Wait. Okay. What is pejorative? Merendahkan. Mm -hmm. Apa? Uh, arti yang punya nilai yang lebih rendah apa pe, pe, penurunan makna gitu ya jadi dialek itu uh, dianggap apa ketika kita mengatakan oh you're speaking a dialect gitu ya itu uh, kemudian maknanya menjadi uh, lebih rendah jadi dialek itu mengalami penurunan makna padahal bahasa itu sebenarnya adalah dialek yang dipilih Uh, dialek yang dipilih karena punya dipandang punya uh, social socio and political interest yang lebih besar. Nah, apa saja uh, apa saja some pejorative uh, misalnya uh, ini bahwa language is the standard form and dialects are not standard. Gitu ya. Language is more correct than dialect. Atau uh, Language and dialects are different and thus not equal. Nah, some uh, of uh, the pejorative meanings are attributed to dialects. Uh, sama seperti ini, sama seperti itu juga berimbas pada ini, vernacular, vernacular language. Okay, uh, vernacular language is uh, actually refers to the, fir the first language. Okay, ini ya, saya tuliskan di sini. Vernacular. Vernacular language uh, refers to the first language that we use for communication with our with the people sur uh, surround us. Ya, kalau misalnya bahasa pertama kalian adalah bahasa Jawa, Jawa Ngoko, misalnya, that's vernacular language. Tapi kalau misalnya bahasa pertamanya bukan bahasa Jawa Ngoko, bahasa Indonesia, bahasa Indonesia nya berarti vernacular language. Tetapi, tetapi uh, akhir-akhir ini kata vernacular itu juga mengalami penurunan makna. Ver vernacular itu disamakan dengan dialek, dialek daerah. Jadi dianggap tidak lebih tinggi dari bahasa. Nah, ada there are some uh, misconceptions about language and dialects. Ya, yeah. now saya teruskan ya. So, okay. So I hope that by this point you understand that how do social linguists see uh, dialects and language, ya, yeah. and not to fall into misconceptions about what is language supposed to be and what langu uh, what dialect uh, is supposed to be. Nah, terus, <clears throat> relating to concerning with uh, dialects, okay, uh, berhubungan dengan uh, dialects ini, nah, tadi kan uh, dikatakan bahwa uh, bahasa itu sebenarnya ya dialek. Dialek yang mana? Dialek yang dianggap punya social and political uh, strength lebih besar lebih besar dari dialek dialek yang lain gitu ya nah um, then concerning with this uh, concerning with this then we have what we what we call a standard dialect gitu ya ada yang namanya uh, dialek standard okay what is a standard dialect a standard dialect is a language that has been through process of standardization jadi uh, dialek standar dialek itu adalah dialek yang sudah mengalami proses standarisasi. Oke, okay. apa yang maksudnya standarisasi atau distandarkan terstandarkan? That is those dialects 
or language uh, dialects that have been codified in some way. Gitu ya. Jadi dialek-dialek yang sudah uh, codified. Maksudnya codified itu uh, varietiesnya itu sudah dikodkan, sudah dibukukan, sudah diformalkan. Diformalkan to an extent that it has been on the books and used in uh, educational settings. Gitu ya. Jadi I'm going to give you an example uh, tentang uh, uh, standard dialect. Gitu ya. Uh, Uh, in English, there are a lot of different varieties. Jadi, bahasa Inggris itu punya banyak variasi. Not only varieties that are spoken by the native speakers, but also varieties that spring from non-native speakers, especially the new Englishes that are now spoken in Asia and in Africa. Ya. Uh, tetapi banyak kemudian yang menganggap bahwa uh, dalam bahasa Inggris itu ada ada beberapa standard dialect of English or standard English. Nah, siapa saja yang uh, dikatakan atau variasi mana yang dikatakan sebagai standard English? Those are the dialects that Uh, have been codified in what we now have uh, uh, in our grammar grammar book, for example. Ya, yeah, setidaknya kita tahu ada yang namanya general American atau received pronunciations. Tuh. Received pronunciations itu adalah old English yang terus berkembang dan digunakan oleh uh, the uh, Uh, in the formal set settings in uh, in London area itu misalnya so that is standardization bagaimana dialek itu dianggap sebagai dialek yang standar adalah ketika dia sudah melalui proses kodifikasi gitu nah uh, why it is hard for other varieties kenapa kemudian sulit untuk variasi yang lain dikatakan sebagai standard karena Uh, banyak yang masih belum di codified. For example, sampai sekarang masih belum ada penelitian yang uh, mengkodifikasikan Indonesian English itu seperti apa. Gitu. So, a lot of people still question, is Indonesian English a variety? Seperti a dialect? Gitu ya. Nah, jadi seperti itu. Nah, Kemudian, uh, tetapi masalah kodifikasi ini juga uh, akan kembali lagi di, uh, akan kembali lagi di apa uh, di uh, uh, viewed from the point of view of social and political identity. Uh, why? Uh, ada satu variasi dalam bahasa Inggris yaitu African American Vernacular English yang sama. It's been codified, sudah uh, terkodifikasikan, gitu ya. Variasinya sudah terlihat sangat jelas and codified. However, it is hard for people or for uh, users of English uh, to see it as a standard dialect because it doesn't have that uh, bigger strength or bigger magnitude of uh, social and political uh, interest, uh, social political strength, gitu ya. Okay, to become standard language, that there has to be standardization process which strongly relates to the selection of idealized norm. Jadi, what's the idealized norm? Seperti apa norma yang mau dipertahankan? Tuh ya. Standardization is an ongoing matter. Fixed language is not possible because all languages keep changing. Yang namanya standard language itu uh, pasti ada perubahannya. Karena... Uh, Uh, bahasa itu selalu berubah. Tetapi the difference with uh, standard language is that uh, they try to resist changes or to minimize changes. Kalau di standard language itu mereka berusaha untuk meminimalisasi perubahan. Tuh. Makanya ada semacam pattern, ada penjaganya. Ya. Maksudnya penjaganya, oh when you speak English like this, you're wrong. Seperti itu. Uh, 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 dari point of view of those who try to retain uh, standardized English. 
Okay. Okay, ya. Okay. Jadi kita sudah membicarakan uh, language, dialects. Okay. Kita juga sudah membicarakan one type of dialect that is standard dialect dan bagaimana kemudian Kemudian sebuah variety, sebuah dialect itu uh, dipilih menjadi standard dialect, gitu ya. And then now let's talk about some uh, uh, types of dialects, gitu ya. Jadi some types of varieties, uh, and then we're going to talk about some uh, types of dialects. Okay, so in dialects we also know something that we call as regional dialect. Excuse me. Okay. So we know something that we call as regional dialects. Yeah. Regional dialects are referred to different kinds of dialects that you find in different geographies, different areas. Jadi dialek-dialek uh, yang berbeda karena uh, perbedaan daerah. Itu yang, yang noticeable because of of the different of areas. Misalnya uh, uh, bahasa uh, Jawa uh, di Jember, uh, Surabayaan, uh, Malangan, atau uh, Soloan dan Yogyakarta different. Ya, jadi dialek-dialek yang Uh, ditemukan berbeda karena uh, ditemukan berbeda di loka karena lokasi yang berbeda. Those are regional dialects. Okay, and then we also have something that we call social dialects. Jadi ini adalah variasi yang berbeda bukan karena its geographical uh, its geographical positions, uh, rather because of some social uh, factors. For example, age or uh, power. So yeah, I'm going to give you an example. An example is that uh, di sini ada yang dari Solo tidak? Tidak ada. Oke, okay, tidak ada. Oke. Okay. Uh, Oke. Okay. Oh, atau ada yang pernah menangi mendengarkan uh, bahas uh, mendengarkan pidatonya uh, Pak Harto atau menteri-menteri seangkatan dengan Pak Harto? Belum pernah, Mem. Belum pernah. Oke. Okay. Nah, Pak Harto itu kalau uh, berpidato atau menteri-menteri yang seumuran dengan beliau itu uh, walaupun menggunakan bahasa Indonesia tetapi suffixkan itu diubah menjadi ken. Uh, kita akan mengejawantahkan nah, kan itu menjadi ken. And this kind of feature is not feature that we have nowadays. Kalau generasi sekarang sudah tidak menggunakan itu. Jadi, it is uh, something that a dialect that is possessed by uh, people who belong to uh, um, some social uh, class atau bisa age atau class, gitu ya. Uh, 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 tapi tidak, dialek ini bukan uh, muncul karena uh, perbedaan wilayah. Ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, itu adalah di ethnic, ethnic dialects atau biasa di Nah, Nah. So, uh, ethnolex yaitu different uh, varieties uh, that belong to uh, certain ethnic groups. Ya, yeah. jadi ini ini 
uh, yang uh, ini observable bukan karena the region tapi karena the historical background or his historical heritage of the speakers. Ya, yeah, misalnya the African American vernacular English. Kan? Uh, bukan berarti AAVE itu sesuatu yang uh, hanya uh, digunakan di Afrika misalnya. So, yeah, uh, this uh, actually uh, uh, emerge in um, in the United States. Atau misalnya Latino English. Latino English, Latino English, uh, and then uh, African American vernacular English. Nah, itu uh, ethnolex, ethnical di dialects. Jadi bukan karena uh, the geography, tapi karena keturunan. Oke, okay? karena uh, sejarah yang shared by certain member of the groups. Ya, jadi yang namanya Latin tidak hanya Latin, uh, Latino speakers bukan hanya uh, ditemukan di uh, Amerika Latin di sana, tetapi it can it can it can be anywhere. Okay, so those are the types of dialects. Ya, nah. Ada lagi variation, uh, ada lagi variation yang bukan berdasarkan uh, daerah, bukan berdasarkan uh, uh, etnisitas, bukan berdasarkan, uh, bukan berdasarkan the social factors. Uh, kita namakan itu sebagai speech style atau style. So style is the variation that is determined. Okay, so a variation that is determined by the circumstances in which we are speaking. Jadi gaya for to uh, uh, the certain occupations gitu jadi peer in uh, is not used at all Uh, kalau bicara stat, misalnya stat itu melakukan tindakan, tindakan medis stat. Tetapi di apa? Uh, kalau di uh, uh, apa? Uh, penulisan apa? Untuk uh, masalah penulisan karya ilmiah itu uh, berarti yang lain. Ya. Itu yang dinamakan register. Oke. Okay. Now, so far kita Uh, sudah membahas tentang language, dialects, what's language and what's dialects, uh, bagaimana kita mendefinisikan uh, language, bagaimana kita mendefinisikan dialects, and then the type, some types of dialects, and also some other types of variations. Uh, now, uh, this uh, is the end of my presentation. Now, I would like to invite you Uh, to ask me questions if you have uh, questions you would like to ask.
Siapa, ta- siapa saja tadi yang mau bertanya? Should I, can I close this screen or you want me to remain uh, opening this screen for you? Oh, you can close it anyway. Okay, let me just close it. Okay, what is that? Do you think that a dialect could become mm-hmm. a new language if the separated dialect has separated long enough from the main language? And the second question mm-hmm. is, is there any step for a dialect to become a new separated language from the main one? That's it, ma'am. Okay. The first question is, is there any chance for a dialect to become uh, a, new language. a language, promote yep. it, promote it, promote it, uh, uh, promote it as a language? Yep. Okay. Is that uh, your, what you're saying? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this is the thing. There's always a chance like that, but that is uh, very difficult. I've already explained about the standard dialect, right? 